three, two, one, boom. And we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is a Socratic Dialogue. Episode, yes. the second version of our Socratic Dialogue. Um, basically what this is, is we just take one thing that we thought was super cool and we should talk about it, rather than the four things that we talk about throughout the week, not in the roundup. Uh, but yeah, so we checked out Graham Hancock's talk in Toronto, and um, this, is what, this is what the topic is. We're just going to recap it. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's start off. What do you think, Vish? Oh, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, just seeing him in person. That's uh, what you thought was cool out of the whole thing? You're just like, hey, it's him oh, in person. Wait, no, no, no. I never finished. Oh, okay, true, true, true. Go ahead, go ahead. Because uh, uh, you always wonder, you know, how tall they actually are. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny okay true uh, we're just short that's what it is yeah okay well outside of that it's just um uh because i didn't read the new book so it was his talk was mainly about the i mean stuff book. i but he referenced the old books as well like yeah right yeah 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 how it's connected or referenced a little bit of it but he was mainly focused on the new, new yeah findings yeah, yeah, yeah. In, for sure in his new book so uh yeah it was stuff i've never heard of before or mm-hmm. yeah other than you know some things from the chorogans podcast but uh, true yeah yeah do uh, you find it dry at all it's a lot of information i know i noticed i the guy in front of me fell asleep i was taking notes so i was like super engaged the whole time but i felt it too i was kind of like you're inundating me with so much with so much information my brain's shutting off Right. Did yeah. you feel that too? Oh, I nudged you a couple of times. Of course like, Wake I up, did. bro, wake up. No, no, right, I, you know? I was like in it, and then I wasn't, because I got the major message of the slide, but then the rest of the stuff he said I don't need. No, I know, right? That, all right, so, all right, here, fun fact. When people, like, you read a lot of books, I, I do read them, right. but it's not like when people read books, they typically read them like a story. It's like, I'm yeah. going to read every single word and everything. Right, right. I'm going to create this paint picture in my mind. Yeah. When I read something, I'm looking for like the points. Like, I don't need you to tell me that the sky was blue. I just need to know that there was a sky. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And it's like, that's why I can burn through these books. But I know what you meant about like, because like, as I was writing notes, I could hear him out of the corner, like out of my like side awareness. And I was like, oh, I don't need this part right now. Like, right. you're like, I didn't need the numbers. Like, yeah. one of the takeaways, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Right. But, I mean, I guess other people, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Like, I just wanted the sure. general idea. Like, I didn't really care about the, like, the minutia of it all. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think maybe that's why you fell asleep. Uh, probably. Yeah. But it was definitely not boring, I didn't think. Did no, you? it wasn't boring, because there were very interesting parts that I did, like, really was awake for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. Uh, but it's just... You know all that information in in such a little time. So yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna go over some theories, and then uh, we'll just talk about it. We'll see what sure. you think. Uh, so should I? All right, I'm gonna go through like his primary theory. Okay, so he's cracked the historical code mm-hmm. in my mind. So he's proven that there was a civilization okay. that was here before us. Right. That was seafaring. Yeah. And they were there during the time of the Ice Age, but then they got wiped out because of the Ice Age, mm-hmm. right? And so the reason why they the Ice Age happened, they're like, how did it plummet so quickly? And no scientist could figure it out. Well, they had some theories, but nobody really wanted to like look in depth into it. But he proposes that an, an asteroid mm-hmm. or a comet hit the North right. Pole, the Arctic. Yeah. And in doing that, it melted all of... Um, the water and then once that cold water enters into our system it kind of you know there's like um currents yeah so like it disrupted the currents and that's what plummeted us because it couldn't warm itself up quick enough because the currents were disrupted Mm -hmm. and then we went into an ice age right and that's how it all happened yeah and it was like a flash ice flash ice age because it was like such a sudden stop that like what do you do you know Mm -hmm. and then from there um Just like in our time, if we were, we hit a global catastrophe, the only ones that would survive would be hunter gatherers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And because they would know, like, it's a, it's like their day to day is survival. Mm -hmm. Whereas ours is like, we're very separated. Like we were specialists. Like one guy's really good at accounting. One guy's really good at like putting out fires. One guy's Mm -hmm. like a technology, right? But if you can't be a generalist, then Mm -hmm. if the world crashes, you're done. You know what I mean? Right. And so 
what it sounded like to me was like the the show the 100 you went into like a post-apocalyptic world and then we were the birth children of that post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. world but the reason why we're like a species with amnesia is because like we never had the tools until now to really look into it and what would happen if those hunter gatherers had seen technology from today would they not be like oh these people are gods right like you know what i mean like how are they communicating through this small device back and forth okay yeah, yeah right yeah. it's or like how are they watching like you know what i mean like or how are they flying in the sky they'd be like oh they're these godlike beings yeah and that's where modern that's where like ancient religion came from mm-hmm. you know like uh if you look at like the the um, chinese with the taoist religion and like the uh it's not really taoist i think it's like just the ancient chinese religion and then like hinduism and then like you know these chariots like krishna came from the chariot right you know there's so many like like how are these gods built into ancient systems but it's like it makes logical sense if like what would a hunter gatherer say about our time Mm -hmm. if they had never seen us before they they just make up a story yeah and then those stories became religion yeah so it it also reminded me of like avatar the last airbender yeah because you know like they took the avatar like the airbending or not the the, just the airbending but like all bending in general Mm -hmm. and then they turned these into like different religious groups in korra so like the ang series it was like that was their bending spirituality you know and then in the korra it's like there were like different sects of bending believers right you know and like so i guess like right after we went to um that all mm-hmm. remember that like the um, the cafe it was like all alfinity or something trinity cafe all right, so it's like some weird cafe but then like i was seeing like everybody with their beads everybody with their buddha tattoos everybody with their like you know and i was like oh this is the right. Korra life yeah, like yeah. we're in this modern world but you guys are still choosing to be like ancient spiritualists mm-hmm. because you're like oh like i'm following the tribe of like shakti you know Right, right, right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like, but you don't like that was just like a mm. like a naive analogy, but right. you're taking it so far that you're like we're the devotees of Shakti, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that was what they did in Korra too, you know? And yeah. So like, right. yeah, I just thought that was that was fascinating. I mean, it's, yeah, it's very interesting to see, yeah, like the like. You know, they could take the remnants of what was left and then make different kinds of stories of it, right? Like, that's just kind of mm. what's happening. And, and that's why, so, like, um, so the reason why there's all these similarities, so, like, what are you saying is, like, there are different parts when, like, the equinox hits, um, like, the winter solstice yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then, like, earth meets sky. He kept saying, like, different parts of the world shown that, like, if you look at, the certain structure at the specific time it it perfectly aligns to the what was it the equinox or something with the sun right the sun the sun in the like the sun in the horizon perfectly yeah yeah you know and then like it's at every part of the world and what he's saying is like were they tapping into some like divinity and i was like no no that's just showing you that this was a pervasive religion and the Mm -hmm. the the main they were basically Atlanteans. Like what? I know it sounds crazy, but what these? So when you hear about Atlanteans, like this lost civilization, that is who these people were. They weren't like flying in spaceships and stuff. They were just seafaring. Like they, they had ships. They were just advanced mm-hmm. for their time. You right. Know? But then they crumbled. But the religion of that time, think of it like America, right? Yeah. And actually, when I was reading the book, that's why he calls it America before. Because it's it's the America of before was which was Atlantis, mm-hmm. right? So like how it, America, it like it's so powerful. It's this one nation, and then it goes to these different places, and then spreads its ideas. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. That's what the Atlanteans were, mm-hmm. and then it's like they the reason why you see these these similarities in different places is because they they shared that idea to that place. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, what what do you take away from it? Uh, well, uh, I think what he what I was like were more interested in was because uh, we don't know, or we thought we knew um, 
most of the American America's story, right? Like yeah, because you the thought history. The, yeah. What they believe was that no Americans had been populating that land. Right. You know. Yeah. It's just uh, very interesting that uh, of the things that he found that how how old or how um, uh, like the timeline of when humans may have reached um, North America's right. That's when. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I was finding very finding very interesting because. Normally we thought it was, uh, um, was like ten thousand, was it something like that? Yeah, something like that. Or after the or around the last, or after the last ice age or something like that. But then uh, potentially, with with the bones that they're finding, that it's going to be more like about hundred plus thousand years now. Yeah. So exactly, exactly. So, so they've been here for a while, and right. then when he goes to these places in America, and like you find these these structures as well, like these these other spiritual structures that are mm. spread out across America showing you that this Atlantean civilization, they had spread their ideas worldwide. Right. But it makes sense because we do that now. Like, it's like, yeah. you're like, that makes, like, how could that possibly, how could, like, an Atlantean race, like, capture most of the world? Mm-hmm. Think about how we call it, like, um, globalization. Yeah. In my, in my university course, they called it Americanization because it's like America really changed how the globe is viewed now. We all wear, like, T-shirts and, like, you know, mm-hmm. everybody loves pop music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, we're doing this again today. You know? Right. What I found really interesting about, like, the Ice Age thing is when he said that the comet hit the Arctic and then it melted and mm-hmm. then, like, it, it cast us into an Ice Age. Right. That's kind of what we're doing now with global warming. Like, there's, like, these patches in the Arctic, which are melting the Arctic and, like, changing the polarities, mm-hmm. you know, not as quickly as um, the if the comet had hit, but they are right. changing, you know. So it's almost like history repeats itself, which actually is interesting because if you look at ancient um, religions, yeah. they believe that we had gone through different periods. Like uh, the Greeks and the Indians, the Hindus, they believe that um, we went through, like, bronze, silver. Yeah iron gold age right yeah. like different different periods and then once you hit the gold age then you get cast back onto the bronze age it's like why would these religions have the exact same philosophy yeah because they knew that it was passed on over time like it's like we've been here before many times yeah we just didn't know we right. were here many times before right that would make more sense with those old texts i guess or oral mm-hmm. beliefs and um so so, sorry, sorry. To, cycles. to to go back to because like, this is pretty interesting. So like, the the first map that they found, um, the most ancient map, like historically within like our modern science, yeah. It it would show like, um, the art. Uh, so okay, so that map was actually based off of maps from hundreds, like hundreds of prior maps. They just neglected to mention that, right? Like, right, so yeah. that guy was like the guy that invented the most modern map. He was basing his map off of other maps. Mm-hmm. But they're like, no, no, those were like those maps couldn't be real. Those were just like figments of imagination. Right. And then he said that no, the maps were stored in the Library of Alexandria. But then when they got burned, we lost all that information. Yeah. But wouldn't it make sense? Think of it like from a post a post apocalyptic war. Oh, world, you have like Alexandria, that's like the pinnacle. And then this place gets burned down by like native, like yeah, like against tribes, right? You know, they're like you're too powerful with your knowledge. We're just gonna go there. It's like the Huns and the Chinese, mm-hmm. you know, like the Huns were the outsiders, or like uh, in a contemporary term, it's sort of like the the um, in the Game of Thrones, the people outside of the wall. What are they called? Wildlings. Yeah. So it's like the wildlings, and then the people of the north, right? It's like, or the people within the Seven Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. It's like. No, you have this like outside group that's kind of pissed that the inside group has stuff that it won't share. Right. So they're obviously going to revolt. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Very true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, what else? So that made me think, like, what did we lose in the library of Library of Alexandria? Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, what was in there that we? Because he said he based lose. those maps off of li- the Library of Alexandria's maps, mm. right? And then what was interesting too is like, in certain maps there was the Arctic, and then in other maps there was no Arctic. So it's like, oh, was this a sign of like, during the Ice Age there were still people trying to map things, right? But there was no Arctic. 
Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to say. And then through DNA science, uh, like, how do you know they were seafaring? So there was, like, DNA in um, Australasia, he said. I think that's, like, Australia-Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, then they found the exact same DNA in the Amazon. Right? Yep. And, but, but there was a land bridge at the top of the map, right? So, like, mm-hmm. if we weren't seafaring, you would find the DNA crossing around the world to get to um, to get to the Amazon because Australia, Australasia and the Amazon are separated by vast oceans. Yeah. But there was no DNA. There's only DNA in these two spots. So the only logical conclusion is that they were seafaring. Right. They, they crossed the sea. Right. Which goes against the assumption that the Hawaiians was the first seafaring culture. Mm-hmm. Because this one would have predated it by like 30,000 years, I think he said. Yeah, yeah. If they were in the Americas, 100,000, then yeah, I would exactly. yeah, say yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, so fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even even with that, even with the Hawaiian thing, too, they still don't think, I don't even think they still believe that they had big ships. Hmm. The Hawaiians? Yeah. Oh, interesting. But there's uh, no way that they would make that across without big ships. Exactly, but, yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's interesting to see these uh, new evidences shows up, show up. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, especially with the, yeah, the DNA anomalies, I think that. That was like the smoking gun. Yeah. It's like, how, how else could you possibly exactly. jump from one area to the next yeah. without seeing them cross? So what I find interesting, too, is like uh, those ancient cultures, they believed in psychedelics, like mm-hmm. uh, ayahuasca and like all this stuff to like to connect to the gods and like all these religions did it too like egypt did it yeah. right they they did the blue water lily and then they would like take this dmt and then they'd travel into mm-hmm. like another world right yeah but like even that because we're still doing it today but we're stuck on their belief system yeah so like if you are to believe that that would negate science because science tells you that without a cere- cerebral cortex, you can't possibly interpret this data. Mm-hmm. It's like humans just create meaning out of chaos. Right. We create patterns. So a good example is like if you look at the cloud, there it's just chaos, right? Yeah. But if you, you can see like a dragon, you can see like a person mm-hmm. in the cloud, but really it's just chaos manifesting. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the exact same thing can be said about a psychedelic experience. There are these. There's no portal to another dimension. The, they're just affecting the brain in a specific way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like how come people on like acid they'll see like fractals. All people on acid will see fractals, right. right? And it's like that's that's because maybe it's just affecting your visual cortex in a specific way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like there's a fractal dimension. Right. It's just that that's what the the drug is doing yeah not the, and then you're you're attaching meaning to it yeah you're like oh there's a fractal dimension it's right, like, right no that's not true but that's what they believed back then in those ancient cultures right. and that's why they would say things like oh once we take the soma like in in the the indian culture it's like soma was basically like mushrooms mm-hmm. and like it would uh, so basically what they believe is soma is like you would eat mushrooms like this like a very potent mushroom and then you'd pee it out and then once you pee it out, you would drink that piss and that would get you high. Even more high. Oh, okay. Because, like, it filters through the body system. Right. Right? So, allegedly, they would, like, drink this mm-hmm. and, like, um, and it would make them see, like, visions. And then those visions would help guide them. But it's like, no, it's just allowing you a different perspective on life that you nev- normally wouldn't have gotten. Right. Like, there's no, like, entity telling you something. Mm-hmm. You're just you're making the meaning out of an enhanced perspective. Okay. So this right. is science. Yeah. Right? This is modern. But then, like, you get, again, those, like, subcults from the past, mm-hmm. like, that still believe in ancient stuff. Right. And that's why I said when we went to that cafe, I'm like, oh, it's like Legend of Korra. Like, we're watching these people believe in a thing that's not real. Because if you go back to... Ang's time, it was a normal thing. Like, it's like, no, we're just benders, whatever. 
But then, like, in Korra, they saw them as, like, deities. Yeah. But it's like, why would you see them as deities? Like, if you go back to the normalness, you'll see, like, the reality of the situation. Right. They're just people. Yeah. Who can bend. Right. You know. Hmm. Or was that Aang's time? Was it Aang's time? Remember, like, I think it was Korra. Uh, you know what I'm saying, right? Remember, right yeah, like, I know, I know hey. what you mean. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's very, I mean, yeah, it's like the... So that's the one thing I disagree with him on. When he's like, right. oh, if we take DMT, we go into this, like, ancient dimension. I'm like, that's not really true because, like... So a good example is even in his own book, Supernatural, he talks about, like, he showed a picture during his presentation of, like, these, like, mm-hmm. tribesmen okay. creating fractal yeah. images in the ground. Because oh. they're like, oh, we see this thing, so we're going to draw out these fractals. Okay. And then if you give a spider LSD or acid, they're the same thing, um, the spider will start weaving webs of fractals. Okay. And it's like, okay, that just tells me that it's just affecting, like, beings in a specific way. Right. That's what this thing does. It's almost like if you gave me serotonin, you serotonin will feel happier. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just the chemical affecting you. Like, we're all chemical-based beings. We just yes. forget it. Right. You know? Even spiders are chemical. Because it's like, oh, is the spider going into, like, a godly dimension? And he's mm. seeing fractals. He's trying to tell the other spiders, like, no, this is what's really going on in the world? Highly unlikely. They don't right. even have a cerebral cortex, a prefrontal cortex to, like, logically <laughs> figure that out. Right, 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 right. It's just acting, but because we have the prefrontal cortex because we're humans, which is our logical processing center, we've created the story. That's where stories are come from. Right. The frontal logical, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Right? Like, yeah. I just, we're like, we're like the species that believed it was special because the mind told it that it was special. Right, right. We forget that we're a part of this giant system. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when when they say, like, so, like, I heard this one story. This guy was, like, messaging me, and he's like, uh, it's weird how, like, you can hear somebody say, like, oh, I've meditated for, like, 30 years. No, no, meditating for 30 years is, like, getting one trip of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And I told the guy, like, no, that's just, you're just, you're just receiving the same perspective of oneness. So you could either meditate for 30 years or you can do the mushrooms. They're going to give you the same perspective. Right. But it's still, like, how are you attaching to that perspective? Because some people who go on, like, the mushrooms, they're going to go crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like... It's like we have to watch the meanings we tell ourselves. Very true, yeah. You know? Yeah. Or be mindful of what that is. Just be yeah. be mindful that you're being mindful <laughs> at all. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like it's this weird like spiraling paradox where it's like the mind tricks itself into thinking that what it saw was real. Yeah but it forgets that the mind created the thing that it saw in the first place. Right. Like, all right, good example. Um, if I point a gun at you, mm-hmm. right, if, if you've been shot before and I point a gun at you, you'll be like, oh, crap, it's going to hurt me. But if I pull out this gun and you've never seen a gun before, you'll be like, what is that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, so is the gun really triggering fear or is it you? You're mm-hmm. triggering the fear yourself. Right. It's like the drug. It's like the drug's just doing something. You're attaching meaning to it. Mm-hmm. So again, that's the only thing I disagree with for Graham Hancock. Yeah, but it, it, the, the, yeah, but he wasn't like outside of all that. Like I think that what he was. No, he's talking about like the Atlanteans. Right. What I really liked was like how he ended it with like we found the Atlantean race. Like they probably came from Turtle Island. Blah blah. blah. And I was like, mm. oh. This culture that you've been talking about, this this lost civilization, right. they were the Atlanteans. Because Plato, so the big like the big coincidence is Plato is the first person to talk about the Atlanteans. So then they're like, where did Plato hear about the Atlanteans? Mm-hmm. He heard, he heard about it from his relative Solon, right? Right. And then how did Solon hear about it? Solon went to Greece, and then they talked about the Atlanteans. Mm. in their texts right and then it's like but the atlanteans were around nine thousand years before greece okay Mm, okay so what's a mind blow is people are like oh no they just made that up but 
if you actually look at when the Ice Age started, it was... It fits the time. It fits when he said that Atlantis fell. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It, it matches the timeline. Yeah. That. Right. So it's like, did they make it up? Or did global warming through a comet actually wipe out the Atlanteans? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, maybe it did, yeah. I mean, I think these are evidences to show that it did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, what this really taught me, like, what I what I really find, like, fascinating about all this is, like, you can know so much about, like, where we came from and, like, all this, but, like, nobody cares. Like, it's such a niche thing. It's, like, we've cracked the code on civilization. That's cool, bro, but I got to pay for my bills or, like, I got to feed my kids or, like, yeah, of course. I got to go on this vacation. But the funny part is that's exactly what he said happened to the Atlanteans. They were so oblivious to this that, like, they just fell. But there's no way to solve it. Like, what are you honestly going to do? Like, what what can you do? Introduce it in educational systems. Okay, that's cool. But, like, still a lot of people are not going to care that much. Because mm-hmm. they're going to be thinking about their next meal or whatever, right? You're right. So, like, what I believe the biggest takeaway from all this is, like, just enjoy your experience. Because whether or not this is real or whether or not it's going to happen in the future, like, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. what really matters is your day to day experience. Right. Like if it yeah, ends, yeah, yeah. if it ends, it ends. Everyone's life ends eventually. Mm-hmm. You know. So like finding out this great mystery, it's like it's more like I just scratched an itch that was very, like, predominant in my mind. But I I believe I've solved it. Like in my mind, my my mind's like, oh, I get it. I get why we're all here. Right. And I get we've been here before. You know. Yeah, and it probably didn't happen again. Yeah, and it'll happen again. But, like, why are we here? It's because history brought us here. Like, there was a civilization before, it got wiped out, we reset. That makes sense to me. But, like, why are we here from a spiritual point of view? It's whatever your mind creates. Right. Because life is just a story you tell yourself. Yeah. So it's like, whether whether or not we've been here before doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's really down to the story you choose to believe in your own personal experience. You know, right, and that's why I think like politics and like all this stuff is like it's just hurting cats. Like, why do we vote people in? Because we, why, why do we have like a manager, or, like a CEO? Because we don't want to think about all the heavy details. We just want to do our one task and let the chips fall where they may. And mm-hmm. then when they don't fall in our favor, we complain really loud. Yeah, but that's you know what I'm saying. It's kind of weird though. It's like. You don't want to take an active role in your own life, so why are you complaining when it doesn't fall in your favor? Uh, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Sort of, but we're also... It's, it's sort know. of like... What I'm saying is, like, we're such a confusedly apathetic species. Like, a, a lot of us. Not everyone. But it's sort of like, oh, why do they get something that I don't get? Like, why do they have it easier than me? Yeah. And it's like, maybe you should work a little harder. Maybe you should take advantage of opportunities. Right. You know, but, like, we don't really... We we don't really want to do these things. We just want to be fed them. He he calls us, like, a spoiled spoiled race. Because everything's so easy now. We can go to the supermarket. Well, in this... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, that's what the whole of society is most of society not everyone but like it's like a spoiled brat who just wants their way it's like why why can't i have it's this thing the, okay like, all right so a good example it's like uh when people argue about like climate change for example sure and it's like nobody did the research to look into what's the real issue here we're just yelling for no reason Right, okay. So yeah. that's what I mean, spoil kids. It's like, no, I want it my way. No, I want it my way. No, I want it my way. All right, why don't you just look at the facts and then you figure out how you're going to proceed. Yeah. Oh, but it's too much work to look into the facts. Oh, it's too much work to change my life. Spoil kids. We just want things without doing any of the work. That's the whole society. That's why we, that's why we elect people to govern us. Because yeah. we don't want to think about it. We just want to think about our day-to-day. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I'm not saying, like, I'm above this, though. No, yeah. I'm, I'm like, no, I want to focus on my own things. Like, you guys run the country. Whatever. I don't care. 
Yeah, we're just talking in general for this is what humans do, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But that's, that's why I'm saying the... we're spoiled, la- lazy species. No, but that's uh, sure. Yeah, but that's the, just, that's about, how. Yeah. But that's how. That's what the environment has made us. That's it, that, exactly. Or I would exactly. say that that's what nature has made us. That is, yeah, all right, true. Because that happens in. True. I'm just saying it happens in the animal kingdom too. There's for sure, always for sure. going to be a we, leader. We've just gotten too large. Right? Of course, yeah, but this is what. Yeah, large, yeah, but this is what would have happened. What will be happening, anyways? Like it's gonna. Uh, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Right, no, no. Right, built if, up so with like, these you, sort of. Um, let's say you have a pack of hyenas, ten hyenas, and then there's ten hyenas, and then there's only like twelve buffalo. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna work hard to get those buffalo because they're like, oh, there's only ten of us, bro. Yeah. But if there's a thousand hyenas, and like a thousand buffalo, or like, right, you know what I mean? It's like you can just get lazy. Or a thousand, uh, like five hundred buffalo, a thousand hyenas. It's like, okay, well, I don't have to do any work. They're gonna bring the food back anyways. Yeah. But that's that's why I'm saying oh, we've gotten too large. Uh yeah, but I mean, that's. But nature has made us. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, just, I would, yeah it's like uh, I'd say like that's just. I mean, uh, what, 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 yeah, that's that's yeah. That's what I wouldn't I'm say it's like nature uh, really uh, made it, but it's more like that's just how things. No, have no that's out. what I mean. No, no, we're, I'm just saying that uh, we were gonna go into this. This is how we were supposed to evolve into. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, true. I see what you're saying. We, we were gonna build it up this way, anyways. Like it's just. What well, I get what you're saying. And then what you're saying up, is it's like it's just fate. It's yeah, just, it's just probability. It's yeah. not like 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 it's it's it was destined to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but once you realize the play of the the determinism, but then that only some people would realize that, right? That's what I'm saying. Like spoiled kids. It's like you don't want to do the work to realize it's just determined. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because if you realize it was determined, you would just enjoy your experience. Because like, no, no, we have a finite amount of time here. How are you going to go through your experience? Mm-hmm. Are you, you're just watching a movie. Literally, you're just watching a movie. The start and the end have already been recorded. You're just watching the movie play out. Yep. Right? Because it's like probability, determinism. Like, all ancient, like, ancient texts will say, like, they'll reference it differently, but it's like the modern, um, the modern interpretation is that, like, we're watching a movie and we are the actor in the film, and then our awareness is sitting in the the movie seat. Right. You know, like, if you, have you heard that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, what my thing was is, if we're watching a movie, that means everything's predetermined. There is an end. But we get caught up, the actor, or the, the person in the seat is watching, and they're believing that they are the actor on screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But it's like, just enjoy the fact so but when i say like enjoy it it's like so then should you never be angry no no like when you're angry be angry when you're sad be sad right that's that's what true enjoyment is it's fully immersing yourself in your experience if you're afraid you're afraid Mm -hmm. this is just fear okay right you know but again a niche thing it's like it's niche thing yeah it's so niche it's like nobody cares like how like all right, let's say, all right, how many people, are, if you're listening to this right now, you're one of the niche people, okay? Let's say 100,000 people start listening to this. You're 100,000 niche people. How many people are on this earth? Seven billion. Yeah. So Plus. if you take those numbers, it's like this is a very tiny drop in the ocean. Yeah. So it's like nobody cares. You could have cracked the code all you want, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. But this is also the problem with the 1%. We're part of the 1%. <laughs> Who has the opportunity to crack the code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, for sure. Yeah. yeah, but that's why it's saying I'm saying the rest it's just like got other problems to deal with. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, that, but again, spoiled children. We we have the opportunity to think. Mm-hmm. It's like Socrates, hence Socratic gamers. Yeah, you know, you just you're because you were saying like um, that these philosophers were rich. They had like means. Nothing to, else to do in their life. Yeah, even though they would pass themselves off as being poor because it was a part of their experience. Yeah. But they had money. They yeah. came from money. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's the thing. What do you think of... Uh, I think I think this is so funny. Like, 
on a personal perspective, you and I have always kind of been this way. Like we were in line and we were like watching these people like talk to Graham Hancock and be like, oh my God, you changed my life. Oh my God, I went to this thing. And like, like granted, he inspired me to travel, right? Like remember when I was going yeah. on that like five month backpacking trip, I was like, oh Graham, I would listen to Graham Hancock and play Uncharted, you know? Right. So like my two biggest influences for that were Graham Hancock and um, Neil Druckmann, you know, the creator of Uncharted. Well, but it's like, yeah, it, but it's okay. like, sure. why do you need to hear that? Mm-hmm. Like that's, like, I'm in a line full of like 300 other people, and you're gonna listen to all 300 of us tell us your backstory, <laughs> and you think that that guy's gonna remember every single one? You can yeah. even see his exhaustion, eh? Did you notice? I was like watching. Well, him, yeah, like, after two hours of standing and talking, of course. And then like, I'm already him, tired and then, of like. Yeah, it was and so And then weird. writing down, writing on each book. And then every and, person just like, oh my God, I read this thing. Oh my God, right, like, right. well, I decoded this thing. Well, like, it's like, yeah, okay, we, we may have, like, expanded upon his study, but I'm not going to tell you that. Like, you're, like, 69 years old, bro. <laughs> like, what, are you going change your life now because of my thoughts? I think it's, uh, you know, it's more... I mean, it's just more for the, it's for fans. the fans. Yeah, than it's fans, for, uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is it's just like it's like they're more appreciative of the person than the actual work you know what I mean it's like it's like I'm coming to you as a knowledge resource I'm not coming to you as like I like your life like you're very inspirational no 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 like but I find a lot of people inspirational like Joe Rogan Kevin Hart right they're inspirational but I'm not like I don't want to hang out with you just like I'm sure you don't want to hang out with me like you're inspirational because we don't want to hang out with one another Right. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you're just living your life, bro, and that's like inspiring. Right. But it's it's what a fan is is somebody who's like, I wanna be a part of your life. It's like, no no bro, like we've the reason why I'm on this side of the fence and you're on that side of the fence mm-hmm. is because we live different lives. Like I wouldn't be you wouldn't be a fan of mine if we were friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then like and then so like anyways so we went to a warp tour before and like we talked to the bands and they were like like everyone's like fangirling you know like oh my god and we were just like what's it like being in a band man that's, that must be crazy and then like with our experience of right. Hancock it's like yeah, yeah. it's like you're awesome man he's like he was like thank you and we had nothing for him to sign you know right and then my only question was, where did you buy that book? Because I want <laughs> to read it. Or where do you buy too. that? Like one of his other books, right? Yeah. No, no. Uh, he he read a book and he oh, references that book. I see, I see. And I was like, where did you buy that book? Because I couldn't find it online. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I had Googled Amazon, and he's like, just buy it on Amazon. I'm like, what? So I went home, and then I was like, it's on Amazon now. What the hell? I swear I couldn't find this when I first Googled it. <laughs> Maybe they just ran out of stock or something. Maybe I guess. But see, it's like that's the difference between a stand and like. <laughs> I like you for a, like a thing. Like you're <laughs> you're helping me evolve my character. Right. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. And th- another thing is like that beta thing, where like everybody who is like, they talk to him and they like sit on their they like kneel, at his feet, and we're like <laughs> I was like what? <laughs> this is so beta right now, bro. Right. Then when we came up, we just like stood and we shook his hand, and then he had to stand up to meet us because I'm like yeah no I'm not gonna kneel like what is this? Right. Some Osho stuff right now, yeah? Graham, you're awesome, though. I'm not saying... It's not a knock on you. I'm just saying, like, you're... The, the stands... It's just the, I, the, that, that kind of idea is just weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, it's kind of weird. Like, why yeah. would... Why would I kneel? Right. It's like some stand. Stand stuff. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's such a knock. But I don't know. I, that, that just, like, peeves me off. I'm like, have some self-respect, bro. Whatever, man. Each to their own. Yeah, exactly, because it's like it's your life experience. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Final thoughts. This is just how we think. Uh final thoughts? I mean, just look at that horizon. Oh, in the game? I mean, yeah, and, and that's what he was doing with his uh pictures, right? Yeah, he was going mm-hmm. to these like but how do you, you know those happen every twelve years? So I was like, damn, if you visited those three spots, that's thirty six years of your life. Every 12 years yeah, in think, perfect think alignment was, yeah, or perfect every alignment, year? Yeah. No, I think it's 12 years. Okay. I don't think it – because it's like the spring equinox. It's like it's it, a very specific That means time. it's every year. Oh, really? Spring equinox. 
the day of spring. I don't remember. I, I at the Stonehenge, it. it happens every year. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. They oh, go okay, there yeah, every yeah. year. See, that was that was that was the <laughs> statistical part I ignored because I was like, yeah, this is just not serving me right now. Right. Yeah. Let me just. Okay, so they're all. Aligned. I mean, there's a lot of pyramids that do that. Like the when I went to the Mayans one, that's also calculated for when spring starts, so they can start the harvest. That's what all these are. Yeah. Calendars. Exactly. Time, calendars time, and time. So it's like timekeepers. So yeah. if you look into like the seven sages theory in his first book, um, Fingerprints of the Gods, what they talk about is like these seven figure, hence eighth sage. That's where the name came from. But the seven sages went around the world teaching their knowledge. But these seven sages were Atlanteans. Right. Right. And they were teaching these places like how to farm and like how to calculate, mm. you know. Like the 300 that came down from the space. and uh, 300? The show. 100. Oh, it's 100, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they came down from the space and they taught them their ways. Yeah. I kind of feel like the writers of science fiction must have read, like, a lot of science fiction or, like, alternate theories. Like, Graham, they must have read Graham Hancock's so. work. Because it's, like, that coincides really well. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's quite logical, too, though. But, yeah. True. It's funny because we, like, fear a post-apocalyptic world. You know, like, mm-hmm. in human nature, we're, right. like, we make a lot of movies about the apocalypse, yeah. right? But how did the dinosaurs feel? This is the dinosaurs' post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like, the, the, the Atlanteans. This well, is the I mean, they didn't know any better. World. They didn't know any better at the time. All right, fine. The, the, the so. Atlanteans. So we're all like, oh, my God, this world is so sick. But the Atlanteans are like, bro, my world got destroyed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's perspective. Right. It's like, right. so like if you look at the 100, it's like, okay, the people who are floating in space, their world got destroyed, but then the tribes that are on Earth in the 100, yeah. their world is amazing because they're like, oh, look at this. We get to hunt on land. We get like, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's what way do you want to look at it? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it could be an apocalypse or it can be a paradise. True. But that's what Jesus said. He said, the kingdom of heaven is right in front of you. <laughs> right. You just need to know how to look. Right. See that? That's what happens when you read too many, like, spiritual texts. And you mm-hmm. can, like, draw upon it. And people start thinking, like, oh, my God, you're, like, ultra spiritual because you can recite something. Right. You, you know what the code is for that? What? Read the goddamn book. <laughs> that's all. Okay. All right. So. Or watch a doc. Or watch a doc. Yeah. <laughs> so until next week. I love these spiritual ones because I rant so hard Next on week? Them. Whenever or, the next one oh, is. Oh, yeah, whenever the next one is. Yeah, because we don't have a timeline anymore. We typically do once a week. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. I love these spiritual rants because, like, they always, like, fire me up. Yeah, they do, yeah. And I'm like, like this is so wrong. But that's my... Then, uh, uh, then I'm on the other side. It's like, yeah, whatever, man. And then this, <laughs> and then the niche is that we, we record it and just goes out into the ether. Right. People listen, people don't listen, whatever. Yeah. You know. Um, we should, I think a couple of topics we want to talk about for Socratic Dialogue we can stay tuned for are Vice the Movie. Yeah. Not that's yet. a movie review, I guess. That's a movie review, I yeah. guess. Um, we'll see, yeah. You'll have to like field that one because I haven't watched that in a while. And uh, social media, we got to talk about that one. It's going to be a good one. And does money buy happiness? So look out for those. Oh, great. We'll talk about those Great ones. topics. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Okay. Peace.